vivid memory of listening. It was right after Goodbye Little Brick Road came out, and I'd just been to visit my cousin in California, and my cousin had it, and so I'd heard it, and then came home, and I was laying in bed one morning, and on the radio, they played Goodbye Little Brick Road, and the disc jockey had superimposed Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Follow the Yellow Brick Road. Over, over that song? Over a, just over one part of it. Like just as much as I just recited. And I thought that was part of the song. And so I'd hear it and I'd be looking forward to hearing these munchkins say that. And they unfortunately weren't in the actual version. It was just a disc jockey thing. But I remember that actually, that moment when I heard that song laying in bed that morning is what made Elton John click for me. That Even very, with the yellow brick road, especially yeah, but, with that moment, because it was like it just like it caught my attention more. And after that, though, I listened to that song because I wanted to hear that part. But as I listened to it, obviously, I fell in love with the song itself. And that was literally the moment I fell in love with that music. Play it. Maybe we could pull up the version with the Munchkins on it. <laughs> <laughs> Before we play this, I got to tell a little bit of my experience with this song. Crocodile Rock was my gateway drug to Elton John. I went down and bought the single. In those days, when a song would come on the radio that you were really into, you had to go like to the drugstore. That's where they sold right. 45s, was like at the drugstore. Skaggs or Bartels. Yes, yeah, Skaggs or Bartels. I remember as clear as day what that was like to go down to the counter. And where I used to buy it was a, a drugstore called Ostrom's in Kenmore. And she'd bring up this box that had, you know, these singles in it. She'd file through it. And, okay, number 15. Okay, Crocodile Rock. So I bought that. The A side was Crocodile Rock. B side was Elderberry Wine, which I also loved. I thought, wow, what a cool song. A friend of my dad's had this really cute daughter who was older than me she was like you know 14 15 years old and i was like Baby. 10 or 11 and she was just the a huge elton john fan such a fan that that's all she talked about the whole time we were together was oh, elton john it's just so cool and and so that led me to buy the caribou album which came out in 74 that was his current album that had you know don't let the sun go down on me and and i was like this this is incredible i love it and i used to look at all the liner notes and the pictures of the band and i was just so fascinated at that point that's when i started going back in his catalog on one particular birthday party i had this is when i was starting to basically collect his back catalog and I, for my birthday, I, I said, I want Elton John's albums. And the next one I wanted was Goodbye Yellow Brick Road because mm. I had heard it was this two record sad. And I really didn't know anything about what a legendary album it already was at the time. I just knew that it was a two record set and it had this really cool album. Amazing cover. cover. Yeah. And so I got this record and all my friends are at my house for this birthday party. I, as soon as I opened up the, the gift, I, that's all I wanted to focus on. I went down to my room, put it on my little turntable, started playing it, and all of my friends through the whole birthday party were saying, come on, John, let's go do something. They wanted to go outside and play. What a host. Yeah. All I wanted to do was play that album. That's my clearest memory of this. And there were two songs that just, I can't even explain what they did to me, but Benny and the Jets had this weird mesmerizing fantastical vibe to it that just sucked me in and i i just could not get enough of it but then there was this song goodbye elbrick road which is obviously his like the pinnacle of his compositional career and and bernie toppin's lyrical you think this song is is their ace i yeah there's three that sit in that that top and they compete for that top spot and this is probably the very top for me i won't disagree with you yeah One thing that made this song really jump out to me just recently is when I heard a mix of this with pretty much everything stripped away except for the vocals and the piano. Yep. And just, it's mind-blowing. The composition is and to, incredible. To, it's, it's the chord changes. Literally, this song is constantly changing chords. The whole song, every almost every 
measure is a different chord. In the band, my gosh. I don't know, you know, we've you and I have talked about drummers before, but Nigel Olson, part of the vibe of this song is the way that he's just playing so lazily and just like every hit is like at the last possible second. He lays back so far and it gives this song this really It's kind of hypnotic. It is, yeah. I feel the same way about the drumming in um, I've seen that movie too. Exactly. Yes. It's if you just focus on the drumming in that song, it's so off the rails. <laughs> it, it is totally. <laughs> no one would ever write that drum part. You're exactly. That was his thing, and no one, no one played like him. Yeah, I, I could never come up with something like that. No, that's not a surprise. <laughs> yeah. All chord changes. And this whole thing, this and the way those or the orchestra comes in mm-hmm. to back him up. This is music that's on a different level. This is like to me, this is very similar to what, when the Beatles went into the recording studio and made music, there was a magic that was happening in those sessions. It was, they, they, they were capturing a magic. That's what this is. It, they captured a magic here. I have it on good authority. This is one of God's desert island discs. <laughs> I, I wouldn't doubt it for a second. And the lyric, I mean, not even talking about the... the it's basically Bernie Taupin lamenting the fact that he came from this small village and, and was this basically a farm boy and got thrown into this, this whole celebrity world and jet setter kind of culture. He's basically saying, I wish I could go back to the, you know, the, the horny old toad and the plow. Mm-hmm. And, and it's really just a beautiful marriage of lyrics and music. It's just incredible. One, two, three, four. When are you gonna come down? When are you going to land? I should have stayed on the farm. I should have listened to my own man. You know you can't hold me forever. I didn't sign up with you I'm not a prison for your friends to open This boy's too young to be singing The blues So goodbye, yellow big road Where the dogs of society have you can't plant me in your penthouse I'm going back to my plow Back to the howling old owl in the woods Hunting the honey back toad Oh, I found that a side of my future lies Beyond the yellow rig road think you'll do then I bet this you down your plane It'll take you a couple of vodka and tonics To set you on your feet again Maybe you'll get a replacement There's plenty like me to be found Mongrels who ain't got a penny Sniffing for tips like you on the ground So goodbye, yellow big road Where the dogs of society howl 
This whole album is so cinematic to me. It's literally like a little, it's like a movie. You're, you're sitting through a movie. And they all just went to a studio and pooped it out. I know. They, <laughs> no, they knocked it out in like, what, two weeks or it's something like that? ridiculous. Yeah. It's a lifetime achievement in two weeks. When you compare the, the artistic integrity and quality, this is literally like modern classical music. The compositional skills, the lyrics, everything about it, the production, the musicianship. Elton has composed and recorded most of his albums in France, in a partially derelict chateau in the small village of Ereville, some 50 kilometers outside Paris. And it's indeed odd to find tomorrow's music being made in yesterday's crumbling splendor. Here, in very Spartan conditions, he and the group lead a strange monastic existence for the best part of a month, working by night and sleeping by day. We've done three albums here now. Well, four, because this is like a double album. It's got such good atmosphere here, and it's, it's great to work here, you know, it's so easy and laid back. He'll get up early or whatever, and he has words. If Bernie's not here, he, he'll have lyrics and he'll sit down at the piano and sort of play about, and within half an hour, he's written a song, you know. There's never a note written down. He keeps it in his head. When we did Tonky Chateau, Bernie was here writing the lyrics, bringing them downstairs. Elton was sitting at the piano writing them. And then half an hour later, we'd sit down and learn them, the band, you know. And that's the way it goes. Literally just... as quickly as that? Oh, yeah. It's amazing. It was just like a factory. <laughs> the lyrics were coming down. Elton was sitting down and writing the song. And we'd be sitting having breakfast, and we'd just join in. And within about an hour, an hour and a half, we've got the basis of the song. And at that stage, you're busking it. Oh, sure, yeah, we just learn the song. say to somebody, I know somebody who writes great songs and he can write ten in half an hour, you'd, you'd think, come on, you know, they can't be that great. But he, but he does that. Die 
was that Marilyn was found in the news. And it seems to me you lived your life like a candle in the wind, never knowing who to cling to when the rain set in. Your heart and 
let your feelings flow You're not lucky knowing me Keeping the speed real slow In any case I set my own pace By stealing the show Say hello Looking for 